it's a product you've bought, used and it always is in your house. You can't eat it, you can't wear it and it doesn't require a battery. In fact, its success lies in it being invisible. Zor laga kar Haisha! Jaan laga kar Haisha! Kya ho gaya? Haisha! Kuch to karo Haisha! Ab tod bhi do Haisha! Lagao lagao aur zor lagao. Ye Fevicol ka mazboot jod hai. Tootega nahi. लकड़ी से लकड़ी जोड़ें या प्लाईवुड से लैमिनेट फेविकॉल ऐसे जोड़ लगाए अच्छे से अच्छा न तोड़ पाए well, joining me now to discuss the success of Fevicol 60 years on are the three P's at Pity Light, Parik, Puri and Pandey to celebrate, as I pointed out, 60 years of Fevicol's success. Gentlemen, thanks very much for joining us here on the program. Mr. Parik, let me start by asking you, you know, your father started the company in 1959. You joined the company a few years later in the early 70s. Fevicol, the first manufacturing facility, came up in the year 1963, was that correct? No, it was 59, 59 19, itself. 1959 so, itself. Yeah. You know, this has defined the category. This is the category right. as far as adhesives are concerned. What made a lawyer, your father then, consider this? See, I think basically his nature was to do something different. I mean, that was kind of his instinct, not to do anything which was done before. Mm. And he was exposed to possibly uh, trading in international, international trading in chemicals. Yeah. So he saw the so, opportunity and swooped so in. So he saw the opportunity that this is what is being used in western countries. Mm. However, the carpenters in India are using natural vegetable glues, animal glues, etc. So he saw the opportunity. So that's how he started. And where did the name Fevicol come from? I think he, he, I think the FE comes from a company which was a, he was he used to work with which was Federal Dice. Huh. So he picked up I think FE from there. And call is a German word for adhesive, so I think that's how the... Th that's, that's how the two came, yes. came together. Yes. Uh, you know, you, did you always know that you would come back after your education and join the company and take the company forward or did you have any other ideas in mind? Well, at that point I had many other ideas actually speaking. <laughs> so your father I made you ensure that you don't <laughs> have any other ideas besides Fevicol, is it? I, it was just a trial. I came back and you know, it gave it a try uh, and then... And 40 years on, 40 plus years on, you're still, you're still giving it a try, is it? 48 uh, years on. <laughs> no, I, I think for a year or two, I was a little bit shaky. I mean, huh. I, I thought of going back, but by that time I got married and then uh, my wife kind of uh, put the idea to rest that we are not going back. So, <laughs> so Fevi Kal Kajor has, has stayed on. Yes. Uh, Bharat Puri, uh, the first non-family member to, to lead the company uh, and you know what a story this has been I mean you look at any of the numbers it tells you how dominant the leadership has been for this brand since its inception uh, still 70% market share uh, you know we've looked at the history of Pity Light courtesy Fevicol but give me a sense of what the future opportunities look like see the wonderful thing is a we correlate beautifully with GDP hmm. if people earn more money they build a house. If they build a house, we will waterproof it. Mm. They'll buy our furniture. We will make sure the furniture is made with Fevicol. As they acquire objects, hopefully they will drop them. We will join them with Fevicol. Mm. So, fascinatingly, home improvement, the categories is I, pretty I, light. Is pretty light, and the future is. Frankly, we are in a lovely economy where our choice is what not to do rather than what to do. Mm. And I mean, so, the what choice should you not be doing today, as you look at the future? Chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for those of you who don't get the reference, that's the former Cadbury man talking about what they should not be doing. Okay, besides chocolate, what else? No, I think, I mean, finally, we must do, you know, what makes Pidilite successful yeah. is we are category creators, mm. we are pioneers. Mm. We will spot underserved, unserved market categories, mm. fill those not with a product but with a brand. And then hopefully work tirelessly with both users and consumers until we create a category. Mm. That's the story of Evicol, that's the story of Evicwick, that's the story of Fixit, that's mm. the story of MSEAL. And that will be the story of many new categories that hopefully we will keep creating. And you know, when we look at our business, yeah. we define it as core categories, right. growth and pioneer. Right. 
and hopefully the growth in pioneer categories there are lots to come okay we'll discuss the pioneer categories and the growth that you anticipate or hope for there in just a second but piyush pandey uh, you know the fevicol story is so much also the brand story is so much about the kind of communication that onm created uh, you didn't start with creating the fevicol story but you've been an integral part of the fevicol story uh, one agency that's worked on this pretty much since inception that's true uh, in, in fact um, so the, the fevicol ka jod has worked there as well huh as, as somebody made the elephants before i joined <laughs> <laughs> i i came into the picture only around the late 80s on the creative side right and uh, I was actually asked to work on this brand <coughs> by my seniors who said uh, give him all the Indian type boring brands Indian type brands <laughs> <laughs> and uh, probably what I call it now uh, I must have felt that way that B2B is not boring to boring <laughs> yeah. and uh, and I found some very receptive very down to earth very focused people huh. on the pit light side and I, i think they gave me the license to fly hmm. and so uh, what was the brief to you uh, you know i mean as i pointed out at the start this is not this is nothing to do with the sexy world of fmcg that bharat puri gave up on to to join pit light uh, you know this is not something that you can eat wear show off brag about yet it is one of the most iconic memorable brands in india i i think uh, the first brief was actually about a radio spot for a brand called Fevi Tight mm. uh, which has got two of the tubes ha huh. and i went and made a radio spot they loved the radio spot and they said why didn't to make a film of it i made a film for Fevi Tight mm. and then when i showed the film um, i was very nervous because everyone first clapped and then said there is a problem and then his father mr b k parik said to me you know you should there's a problem this idea is too big for a small brand like fevi tight to give it do justice to it uh. take the money and go and make it again for fevi call and rest is history wow. i mean let's put it there was somebody who mm. was a visionary mm. who i have never met any individual or any decision of that kind mm. i have not faced it in my 37 years in the business mm. and that changed the entire scenario then mm. our expectations of bettering it mm. were always there that was a damla ka isha that's mm. how it was made mm. and uh, each of i mean we uh, reached a point mm. where uh, there was no brief required to be given if i ever said give me a brief this they would turn around and say then you know no fevi call if we thought you know the brief <laughs> so yes it's been an amazing journey and a lot of people from my team what uh, involved in it they have also done a lot of this work which uh, i get full credit for mm. but there are a number of people involved if you ask me what is the first brief mm. on a boring sort of category i think the unwritten brief which i can with hindsight say that create a brand that a chocolate guy wants to join some day ah <laughs> <laughs> nice nicely said nicely said no but you know i want to talk about the fact that and you you made that joke about it that at onm they gave you what seemed like indian brands and mr parekh i i want to put that question to you uh, you know part of the fevi call story and the pity light story now uh, is also about what you're doing on the inorganic side what you're doing on the joint venture side so uh, how is that tying in with the fact that you've been able to create this iconic indian brand that has resonance uh, i mean you know who who would have ever imagined that prime minister modi uh, would in his meeting with the japanese prime minister post that meeting talk about the fact that the bond we share is stronger than that of pevi call i mean who would have thought that pevi call would have made it into a prime ministerial speech yeah that's amazing yes so so how much of what we can now see as far as the future is going to be about global growth about global markets about acquisitions about joint ventures no we see uh, in the process of identifying opportunities uh, sometimes uh, we find uh, segments where we believe that we should be there as a pioneer mm. but we don't have the technology or the experience to do it in a short time mm. and now compared to earlier i think that things are moving faster right and we can't take as much time with other products as we took with fevicol mm. so therefore we believe that we should 
spot uh, joint venture partners uh, and get on with moving into categories which are again falling into that pioneer pioneer space. Pioneer, uh, yeah. Uh, space. Yeah. So that's what we are doing actually. I think with uh, when after Bharat has joined, I think several uh, yes. license and joint venture agreements have been uh, signed, and we are looking at uh, several more uh, currently. So this will go on, but I think the the answer to your question that we need to shortcut in the sense that compress the time frame in which we move forward. Hmm. So while we provide all the local knowledge and the support for you know distribution, sales, yeah. brand building, yeah. etc. We sometimes need that experience to move forward. So, Bharat Puri, let's talk a little bit about the pioneer category because that is what people who are looking at valuations are are, are keen to understand. That uh, you know, if it's priced in at this level, then what can we expect in terms of future growth? So, where do you really see the new areas of opportunity where you're not today that you expect to foray into the categories that you hope to want to grow further from here on? And how is it going to happen? Do you see a more aggressive push on the inorganic side? See, two things. One is, if you look at our portfolio, we broadly define our portfolio into three categories. Core categories where we already have a market leading position. We are largely growing the category via, you know, growth in the economy, mm. premiumization, innovation. So things like a Fevi call, a Fevi quick, high market shares, entrenched position. These we'd want to grow at one to two times GDP. Mm. We then have a set of growth categories where frankly we are competing against non-consumption. Mm. Take waterproofing. 7 out of 10 homes in India have a waterproofing problem. Yeah. 3 out of 10 address it. There the job is frankly to make that 3 into 6 mm. rather than worry about the 3 who are doing it and try and get share mm. out of those 3. Mm. Now there we, obviously we must grow 2 to 5 times GDP yeah. and so whether it's that, whether it's e-capitalite, whether it's emerging India, Joe, these are all what we call growth categories. And very simply, pioneer categories are tomorrow's growth categories. Mm. We just bought over India's largest flow coatings company, right. high-end flow yes. coatings, it's called CP. Yeah. Now, in the short run, what we're excited about CP is high-end flow. I mean, take parking lots mm. in India. Mm. You have snazzy buildings. If you go to the parking yes. lot, you feel rather sad. Look yeah. at the shopping malls and their parking yeah. lot. All that is going to change. Now, CP is the provider of these high-end coatings, whether it be for parking mm. lots, factory floors. But we're also excited, Shireen, we see this as an opportunity. Take a city like Mumbai, restaurants, hotels, hospitals, mm. all of them currently using tiling as floors and mm. that's frankly not a recommended solution. Again, it's a pioneer opportunity. It will take us a number of years, okay. but it fits into our model. Okay. Like this, whether it's this, whether it's tile adhesives, mm. we have a whole range of pioneer categories. Obviously, some of them are confidential. Mm. But over time, we'd like our portfolio to be half core and half pioneer plus growth. Okay. That automatically gives us the growth engine. It'll take a little bit of time. Mm. But, you know, and as far as valuations are concerned, there are enough experts out there to worry <laughs> about that. Our job is to grow the company yes. healthily. Yes, that is your job. Uh, Piyush Pandey, what's the challenge now that, you know, what do you do when you have such an iconic brand? Uh, and especially as they try and foray into newer uh, categories, newer areas, they try and grow the pioneer side of the business. From a com communication standpoint what kind of a challenge does that throw up I for think you? the challenge is to stick to the basics mm. um, we have been very focused we have been very consumer focused we don't spend time about what our people like mm. we worry about what people like now there was a wonderful article um, done by Apple yeah about narrow briefs mm. if a very modern category is talking about needle narrow briefs mm. where you can dance on the needle head mm. I think uh, without saying it in so many words, we've been practicing it for a long, long time. And if new guys are doing that today, huh. there is no reason why we won't stick to the basics. We'll stick to the basics. Mm. Consumer first has been the principle of this company even before advertising. Mm. It has been a part of the advertising and it will be the part of our soul. Mm. Anything that's got to do with uh, Pidlight yeah. will speak to the human being, whether that human being is a contractor or a housewife or a little child, we speak to the human being and not the designation. While you said that the brief has always been very narrow, has there been any ad in specific which, uh, you know, there was a disagreement between how you saw the brief and how the, Mr. Parik saw the brief and has there ever been a point where you've probably not been able to take forward what you had imagined? Well, we sailed together, we sang together. <laughs> 
and if there were moments when he indulged me, he has never told me about those. Um, you want to tell us, did you have, how many times have you <laughs> indulged him, Mr. Parikh? <laughs> No, it has been a worthwhile uh, journey. Indulgence, a worthwhile yeah. indulgence. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, uh, it's, it's never an argument scenario. Yeah. We, uh, like we shared something with you today, mm. that it's a mutual dilemma at mm. times. Mm. Because if there is, if we don't feel comfortable as a team, yeah. uh, then we say, okay, tomorrow is another day, I'll yeah. come up with another idea. Huh. We should go in there feeling very good about ourselves. Well, on that note, we'll take a break. But don't go anywhere. We've got the three Ps of Pity Light talking to us about the Pity Light story and Fevi Call at 60. Come back to the CNBC TV 18 special. Welcome back. You're watching CNBC TV 18. We're in conversation with the three Ps of Pity Light on what the future looks like for the company. Mr. Parik, I want to talk to you about one of the big milestones, which is when the company decided to list, which was uh, the IPO in 1993. The stock price has compounded at 25% in the last 19 years. If you take a look at some of the, the numbers, revenue grown from 402 crores to now 7,079 crores in FI19. Margins from about 17.5% to about 19.3% in FI19. Pat growth from 37 crores in FI99 to 928 crores. 20-year CAGR revenue of about 15.5%, EBITDA 16% and PAT of 17.5%. You know, as you look at the next 5 to 10 years, especially making all the bets, the new bets that you hope to make, what is the target that you've set for yourself in terms of financials? Well, Shirin, the answer is unusual. We, we don't set you targets. You don't set targets. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, so you're giving him an easy ride. <laughs> well, I don't think it's easy. Uh, in that since we work differently, I mean in the sense that we identify the elements which go into the outcomes. Mm. That means which are the elements which, which trigger the or which result into good outcomes mm. and then work really well on those, uh, those elements. Mm. And then we have alignment uh, within the company as to which are those key things which we have to work on right. and then see that we do a good job of it and keep at it then uh, 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 and the outcomes generally follow. Okay. So what to your mind has been the big in, biggest differentiator for why you believe that uh, uh, Pity Light and Fevicol have been able to, uh, to dominate the market space despite all of the many challenges, despite all of the volatility, what do you think have been the key differentiators for why this story has been so successful? So a couple of things. One is of course the connect with the users and consumers mm. has been very very strong and we have been reinforcing this uh, all along the way mm. means we are constantly thinking of how to do better and better right. in connecting with right. the, this thing i mean we are not resting that our brand is big and you know we are good enough yeah so we never think like that and uh, what what is the new idea and how can we do better huh. for the consumer and secondly i think the other thing which is always there is that something original and fresh mm. Uh, in our thinking mm. has to be there when we move forward. Mm. So we need to always think of what new and what fresh and mm. how, how can we better ourselves. So it's like challenging ourselves constantly. Yes. Live, live with a startup mindset. Yes. Uh, at 60, still live with a startup yes. mindset. Uh, uh, Bharat Puri, uh, there are no targets that have been given to you, but what do you see as, as you look at uh, the landscape today in terms of the opportunity for further growth from here on? See, as I said, I think we're in a very sweet spot because we correlate well to economic growth. India, the consumption story, in our view, is still actually going to unfold and we're at the center of that consumption story. We also believe we have a model in India India which actually translates to a hell of a lot of emerging markets. Mm. So as we speak, we are putting up plants in Ethiopia, Kenya, we are already across the Indian mm. subcontinent, we are putting is up that, a second plant. Is that plant. taking longer than you anticipated in terms of being able to deliver on returns? No, it's taking longer simply because we've learned. I mean, there's been a learning period. I think the simple realization we've come to is replicate the India model. Try, don't try and do anything afresh. Mm. Make India the laboratory of learning and then just translate in that learning into action. Don't try and learn in newer places because you don't have the kind of depth and strength that you have mm. in India. So take a Bangladesh. We went in fifth into Bangladesh 10 years back. We are now the clear leader. Fevicol actually has the kind of strength that it has in India. Mm. Well, our first factory is full of capa uh, full on capacity. August we inaugurate a second mm. factory. Sri Lanka we've opened a new factory. Kenya we're setting up a joint. Mm. So areas where I believe 
we have a right to win mm. and we have a model that translates that's where we're going to go and we believe largely the emerging markets of emerging asia africa emerging middle east that's mm. where we will go okay uh, that's where you hope to go uh, and replicate the india model uh, but uh, piyush pandey let me ask you this and you know there are so many wonderful memories that one has of the many versions of uh, of the fevicol ads that we've seen on our television screens which one has been your personal favorite if it's last year's one then i should retire <laughs> <laughs> so we, there are no targets as he said huh. we, there are no targets on advertising it is to better yourself hmm. it is to stay delightful to the people hmm. the brief is that we will delight the consumer if they delight the consumer with the products that they do i will keep delighting them with the kind of communication that we put together all the time i think the, we are on the same page at all points of time hmm. we don't uh, do dissections uh, and we move on um, as mr parikh once said in a meeting when somebody was a little skeptical will it do as well as the la as last year's ad and he said we always done better if we fail once we we'll only learn move on yeah move on <laughs> well mr parik uh, 48 years on uh, uh, you know uh, have you moved on or are you <laughs> still very much uh, hands on how involved are you uh, with day to day operations no it the i am involved but the the type of involvement has changed mm. so it's it's dual thing of course one is uh, kind of uh, inducting the new you know management mm. uh, people along mm. with bharat uh, mm. in terms of passing on whatever mm. we have learned mm. so that's a uh, in a sense what was the rationale behind bringing in uh, somebody like bharat into the company uh, is this part of the strategy to in a sense not just promote a profit but also future profit no certainly i mean basically we we need we, we are actually seriously putting efforts to build uh, the future of the company without any of us i mean in the sense that uh, you know how the company will uh, perform when uh, none of the three p's are there <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's that's the in a sense the challenge which uh, we are seriously trying to address mm. so what all we should do now and gradually build the company to a stage where it is not dependent on any one or two individuals mm. so it it has made us think a lot in the sense that see this was a challenge which we were never relevant uh, all along i mean mm. when we were managing the company mm. but it started becoming relevant when we thought of the future of the company mm. and then i had to introspect a lot in the sense mm. that what all goes into making the company successful what has worked why it has worked mm. and it's not easy sometimes you know you do it by instinct and yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 you know it it just happens so to articulate all those things and all is the effort i'm putting in now mm. so that i can pass it on in terms of explaining mm. why certain things were done how it was done mm. and what is the impact on the company's future so that's one of the important things you know we were talking about you playing acquirer during the last 60 years especially after you know the kind of dominance that you've been able to enjoy were there any points where uh, there were potential suitors who were coming your way that you had to turn away no there were there were multinationals i mean they not in the last i mean since we have become i think the, the market cap has increased to a level where they are given up but <laughs> 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 but before that uh, certainly uh, companies from uh, america europe what made you not want to sell well we entered into discussions but uh, finally we realized that we don't want to <laughs> <laughs> you you're holding up the the flag Yes. No, we we didn't want to play second fiddle to anybody. I mean, really huh. speaking, uh, because we felt that we know how to do business in India, hmm. and why should we then get into uh, some kind of alignment where uh, we have to give up that uh, leadership and then uh, toe somebody's line, hmm. which made company uh, go downhill actually. Hmm. So we realized that after discussions with uh, two or three companies, that this is not what we want to do. So. so that 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 was a decision that was put put to rest uh, so l- let me get wrap up comments from each of you and bharat let me start by asking you you know the first non family managing director uh, to come into to pidi light uh, uh, you know what was your first impression when they reached out to you and uh, and asked you to join them see 
Shirin, I had the longest induction possible. I was a non-executive director We're on, on the, the board. board. Yes. And it was about six years. So, Mr. Parik had a six-year selection process. At the end of six years, I was actually here for a board meeting when he said, listen, you know, we want to take you out for dinner. And I'm saying, I'm here for your board meeting. Huh. And the, that's the time. And frankly, it was not on the agenda. And I said, Mr. Parik, I need some time. This is a life decision. And I have to think about it. And two things. One, there was a lot of value match. See, one thing, I mean, when you uh, talked about the success of Piddle, I think one thing also that underlies it is it's very strong sense of doing good, strong sense of doing the right thing. You mm. know. So there was a match of values, and then I asked Mr. Parikh, Mr. Parikh, why do you want me? Because I, you know, uh, I will, I cannot be Mr. Parikh 2.0. <laughs> Correct. I'll be another P. And he said, listen, I've had a six-year selection. I don't need more time. And I just thought that the opportunity was great. I've always been an India lover. I've been, I've always knew I will come back to India. I never knew in what capacity, maybe retired or otherwise. But here uh. was, and therefore, fortunately, my wife thought the same way. She was also happy to come back. And frankly, since then, it's been drinking from two fire hoses, but it's been <laughs> <laughs> wonderfully enjoyable. So, Piyush Pandey, uh, what next now? Uh, you know, in, interestingly, and this was something that even I didn't realize because you associate what you hear on the advertisements as, as almost the taglines, but there's never been a tagline associated with Revicol. I'll keep looking for a tagline till my mental faculties are in order. <laughs> and in the meanwhile, I shall try and do exactly what they're doing in the company to cultivate more people who have some white fluid in their system mm. huh. that's not just red and maybe there will be number of Piyush Pandeys that will continue with the brand. Till then I'm enjoying myself writing like a baby and getting thrilled about little <laughs> ads um, and will continue to do So Mr. Parikh, let me end by asking you what's the dream now for Pity Light from here on? No, I think that the question you asked earlier was the same answer is that the, basically the dream is to actually institutionalize the pillar way of doing things mm. so that the company keeps on doing or progressing in the same fashion it has done in last 60 years but without all of us now can, can it be done i am trying so my dream is to actually make pillar a, a, a champion company but without uh, any of us being present so that there is a new leadership and the people are able to carry forward uh, in the same manner as we have been doing and there is a I mean there is a fundamental ways of working which we have tried to yeah. articulate and institutionalize. Well gentlemen it's been an absolute pleasure we wish you all the very best of luck for the next 60 uh, uh, for, for Pity Light and the dreams that you have for this iconic brand a brand that has clearly been loved and a brand that has built India over time. With that us here on the CNBC TV 18 special. Thanks very much for watching.